I won't belabor the point as to why you good you need good quality sleep, but I will say, and also because I have put in to the comments or in fact around this video somewhere, an infographic with a lot of the research around sleep, why it's good, why you need it, why specifically you need it in terms of reproductive health. So I won't use this video to cover that, but what I will cover are my top tips for making sure that you get good quality sleep. And then of course, this conversation could go on <laughs> for hours and hours and hours into the details and the how and the this and all of the things that you can do and need to do in order to optimize your sleep. But I'm going to cover really some very basic but super important points that are going to be used as the foundation for you to layer anything else on top of that that's specific to you. So the very first thing that when it comes to sleep and getting good quality sleep is planning for it. It might sound simple, but so many people get so busy in their lives and focus on doing everything and more that they can fit into their schedule without actually prioritizing and giving the space in your diary, so to speak, um, to actually get enough sleep. You know, I often talk to my patients about, imagine sleep um, being a, or your, your schedule in a day being a wardrobe, right? There's only so many things you can fit into that wardrobe, no matter how much you might want to fit the entire world in there unless it's some kind of, you know, Narnia based wardrobe, it's not going to fit all different sorts of dimensions. It's limited in what's possible. So you need to take that into account. Of course, planning and organizing your day in the best possible way is going to enable you to achieve and do more in your life. But still, you need to leave those eight hours, you know, that you actually need to get your sleep for that purpose saved and protected because unless you do that it's not going to happen you know it's the, there's a tendency to just wanting to add more and more and do more and and kind of cram things in and then what ends up happening is that you don't give yourself the time needed to get quality sleep and really if you want to have eight hours of sleep you need to plan to be in bed for nine hours so again that takes a little bit of organizing and planning of what you it is that you're going to do the next day how you're going to do it and at what time you start to turn yourself into um, bed so that you can actually really protect that time that is going to give you the quality sleep that you want the second thing is picking a sleep a uh, wake up time Picking a wake up time and sticking to it seven days a week is more important than picking a going to sleep time. Because what happens is this, you might, if you wake up at nine o'clock in the morning, you might not actually be ready to sleep at 9 p.m., which is the time incidentally that your melatonin levels are at its peak. So it's easiest to fall asleep between nine and 11 than it is, you know, kind of at any time before or after that. But in order to adjust yourself for that to occur, um, and certainly your schedule and everything else, you need to actually pick a wake up time that's early enough that's going to enable you to feel tired at that nine to 11 period in, in the evening. And typically that time is between five and 6.30. So picking that time, sticking to that time seven days a week is the thing that's going to enable you to have good sleep hygiene so that you actually do feel tired and ready for sleep, ready for bed um, at that time of night. And there are many, many things that will actually help you to get ready for sleep. I would highly recommend checking out that infographic. From there, you'll be able to get a handout that also helps you to look at the different areas of your health and life to improve and optimize your sleep. And then finally, the, the next thing that I would highly recommend is making sure that you really protect your sleep space, that you make it into a haven that you actually want to get into and that you leave your bedroom for sex and sleep. Right? Not that you shouldn't be having sex on the kitchen table or you know the floor, wherever, like you know, go for gold. Make it exciting. But in terms of actually your bedroom, it really should not be a place where you work or you check social media or you're doing all sorts of other things. Really focus on, and it needs to be somewhere where 
you really want to actually go there it needs to to be clean and well aired and organized so that you feel like okay actually I want to go into that space so focusing on making it so is going to really contribute to you being able to have better sleep better quality sleep and also optimize your health and your reproductive health at the same time so start practicing those little tips and I look forward to connecting with you again soon until next time bye for now